This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's me. Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, yes, I'm here. And we're about ready to do the ramble for yet another frustrating week, although I won't be here on Friday because I'm taking the day off to go on another little excursion, this time out to Fire Island. But we do have uh, a guest tonight. Yes, absolutely. And it's a guest uh, uh, you can see. Watch this, okay? Ladies and gentlemen... The wizened face of Will Durst. We get to do this about every three weeks, and I really love doing it because you're so wise and you're getting to look ancient. You've still got more hair than I do, <laughs> <laughs> and you're a little you're a little out of sync today. Not much, but before it was like you'd say a word, and five minutes later, <laughs> I'd see your mouth move. I I might be in some sort of drag or altered reality, or uh, it it might just uh, you know be, between New York and San Francisco. That could be. Uh, it's probably gets tired right around uh, Kansas. Yeah, so. it, it, it's the Skype gods, whatever. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, my friend? Uh shitty. Huh? Uh, life sucks. The world hates me. I'm living in a cartoon. Um, you know, you've been saying that. You've been saying that same phrase. For the last 30, 40 years. Uh, yeah, yeah, because it's been true. Uh, actually, it's kind of an ironic statement because my life is going pretty darn good. Uh, I don't have a lot to complain about. I've been lucky. Uh, I got into a, uh, a, a, a the, the craft that I've been able to earn a living at my chosen craft. Uh, for 40 years, well, not for 40, but since 1981, and uh, I've been very lucky. I met uh, my best friend and married her, and uh, we live in the the fog-shrouded uh, city that everybody in the world wants to live in, and uh, yeah. So uh, been, do, you, do, you, do you own or do you rent? Uh, we, we bought. We bought in 1989, right before the earthquake. So um, our house has gone up in value, maybe two and a half, three times. Not like in the mission where it went up. You know, if we had bought in the mission, the mission, who would have thunk? The mission. Uh, it would have gone up like eight times. The mission is where all the days. bums lived. Yeah. You have a skid row. It was dangerous to live down there. Yeah, now it's the in place, isn't it? There are all these big apartment buildings, I understand. I, people tell me I wouldn't recognize it. Oh, no, it's so gentrified. Yeah, but now, can I ask you this? I mean, it's a personal question. You can tell me to go fuck myself. How much did you pay for that house that you're in? Uh, 320 something like that. Mm -hmm. And how much is it worth now in the inflated reality that is San Francisco? I'd say about eight, eight. Oh, 50. really? Nothing. Not, I, I would expect like a million. Or a here no, or no, no. We have a tiny, tiny house. Ours is... Uh, under well, no, it's a thousand fifty six square feet. Is that right? Thousand fifty six. Hmm. Yeah, that's funny and, because uh, you know how big this so, apartment. It, you know how big the apartment is I live in. How many square feet do you have? Twenty five hundred. Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, and how much I'm? You know, I've told you how much I'm paying for it. Nothing, right? Nothing right now. Yeah. Eventually, hopefully, I mean, we'll get this thing settled and we'll get we'll have to pay rent, but we will also receive a large amount of money for the problems that we've been put through. But you know. what, what, what amount of rent will you be paying? For well, you know, realistically, this apartment, because it's rent stabilized, should be going for about fifteen hundred dollars a month. But they're trying to say twenty two fifty. They're trying to say three thousand. They'd love to get it up to seven thousand. That's uh, market value. But but the, the court is not going to allow them to do that. They're going to take it from a certain date and say, here's what it should be under rent stabilization. So anywhere between fifteen hundred and two thousand a month. But I'll you know, I'll 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 I'm willing to pay that for this. 
you know, 2,500 square feet. Come on. I never leave the place. I don't need to. It's bigger than, the, it's bigger than the outside, you know? And where's the pool table? I don't have a pool table. We no. have, we have a dining room table, but we don't have, have a pool a table. Dining room table. Yeah. But if I ever get divorced, we'll put the pool table in there. Okay. Cause who needs it? We never eat in the dining room anyway. Whoever eats in the dining room, right? When you have, when you have a dinner party. Uh, yes, but outside of a dinner party, we're always eating at this. At, there's like a little counter in our uh, in our kitchen, which oh, is a massive I, kitchen, I might add. My wife eats over the kitchen over, over the kitchen sink, uh, straight out of the can, like an old man. Yeah. <laughs> well, she, you know, you're an old man now. Well, that's that's the old man that she uh, eats yeah. it like, and she's yeah. an old lady, actually. I mean, I don't want. I, I'm not insulting you because I'm sitting here at 77. We don't you, go there. You have, you have, you have entered in treacherous waters. You can, you man. can refer to me as a, well a, a retired senior. You know. Yeah, you might as well be in Houston right now. I would keep paddling away. Go to the shore. Stay away from these dangerous waters. <laughs> Speaking of dangerous waters, you're a political comic, and this is, of course, I think the greatest. <laughs> gift you could have ever been given in your lifetime. Am I right about this? You know what? It's like I worked my whole life to be where I am now. And remember, Mocking and scoffing and taunting. And remember what it's you said to me the day. You remember what you said to me about the day before the election. Well, after tomorrow, I no longer have a job. You remember that? Yeah, well, that's what happened in 2012 when Obama was reelected. Uh, the year afterwards, nobody wanted to hear about politics. So I wrote a show about being a baby boomer. And I called it Boomer Raging from LSD to OMG. And I thought, I thought that's what I would have to do in 2017. But turns out people want to hear the political stuff. Well, you know what's interesting? And I just noticed this because I turned on the TV and it's like the third day of coverage of the Houston flood. Now, mind you, I used to live in Houston and I'm sorry to see that the people of Houston are befalling that fate, okay? I hear a butt coming. Huh? No. I hear a butt coming. But, but the good side of it is we haven't heard from Trump in three days. Uh, he did call uh, Texans good people, uh, he, and they're going to get through this. Yeah, yeah, good. That we, we that that will make the storm go away. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of like a guy. I got to tell you, I saw a guy. This is true. Coming outside of the grocery store, and he's in a wheelchair. He's obviously got all kinds of problems because he's talking like with that. Can I say retard voice? Yeah, yeah. Would that be? Um, it's politically yeah, incorrect, but, but yeah, you, well, you know what I'm yeah. talking about, right? And he's got a cup, right? And this woman's walking by and he goes, God is great. Oh, Jesus. And I'm looking at him and going, how can you say God is great? Look what the fucker did to you. Yeah. You know? So it's the same as Trump saying, Houston, you're good people. You'll get through this. Eh, fuck yeah. you. Yeah, it's just mouth diarrhea. It's yes, mouth well. diarrhea. Exactly. Um, and, and, um, I, but all I'm saying is that for three days, he hasn't been able to monopolize the news, which he has done for almost every day he was, he's been in office. Yeah. 200 and what? 12, 213 yeah. days. And something. If, if, if something isn't going right, right. He's, he's like a big baby. He, he cries and he, he gets what he wants, you know, because we enable him. My favorite was uh, when he had the. Uh, it was supposed to be the infrastructure press conference. Yeah. And his, and his new chief of staff was there. Yeah. And he started going off on Charlottesville that he meant what he said, and he was doubling down. And and you could see John Kelly go, oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah, you know, I saw him over in the corner. It was like. Oh, yeah, yeah. fuck. Here we go again. We corrected it. It looked like it was going to be okay. Which cat is that? That's Madeline. Say hello, Madeline. There you go. Oh, okay. boy. That cat that is, is that, that cat works on cue, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. She's in, that was hello. She's in showbiz. How many cats did you say you had three? Two. Two. You? Pets? None. None. 
No, uh, we really? you know we were we were cat sitting a cat, and every now and then we get to go over and see that cat, and it, it, yeah, it's yeah. it's the most marvelous cat in the world. And I'm trying to I try, I'm trying to convince these people go on vacation again, go on vacation again. <laughs> So you can cat sit. So we can cat sit. We love this cat. Smart, precocious, you know, great cat. Anyway, enough about cats. Let's get back to Trump du jour. Uh, I mean. In a Charlottesville where he said, uh, he, he, uh, he said that there are two sides to every story. And generally speaking, that's true until one of the sides has Nazis. And then, no, there's only one side to that story. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, he, he said, and there were some good people demonstrating uh, against, uh, for the Robert E. Lee statue, you know. And no, there weren't good people because they were standing right next to Nazis and any good people would, person would say, I don't want to be around these fucking assholes, you know. But then, in Berkeley, we have the black bloc who disrupt anything. And you, you can't have a, a decent march or protest in the Bay Area because the black bloc will show up and beat up even supporters. They don't care who they beat up. Even the people on their side, they'll beat them up. And so what happens is you get the, the left yeah. uh, being being put in the same category as the right. Oh, really? So it, who is the black bloc? Are they black people? No, the black bloc are anarchists. Uh, and usually white guys mm -hmm. who show up dressed all in black and then they have their faces covered and they beat people up at all the protests. Really? I never heard of that. Yeah. Now are they are they are they white nationalists or are they are they oh, what, what, what's wrong with you? Some problem there? Uh, a little contact lens problem. Oh, okay. That's early morning stuff. Uh, no, no, but I mean, are these people white nationalists or what are they actually? Black bloc are anarchists. They're anarchists. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. kind of for anarchy, you know. Yeah, they actually have a symbol. <laughs> <laughs> they have a symbol? The wait, anarchists wait, have a wait, symbol. Wait a minute. Let me, let me put it this way. If you're an anarchist... How do you wind up having an organization? That's my question. Exactly. You're an anarchist. <laughs> you should reject all that. Oh, God. They, they have symbols. They have dues. And nobody pays. <laughs> because they're anarchists. Then you're not an anarchist. If you're an anarchist. Yeah, you pay the dues. <laughs> you know, you hold a meeting and nobody shows up. Then they're all anarchists. That's anarchy for you. Only, only in the Bay Area would you find something like that, you know. And oh, well, that's the problem with being a liberal. A liberal, the very definition of liberal means accepting of many viewpoints. So that's, I mean, you have a have a protest. You know, it was it, it was like uh, during the Wall Street thing. Remember? Yeah. The Ninety nine percent, and then uh, the Wall Street thing, and then the. Uh, uh, the free Tibet people want in. Okay, here you go. And then the, the global warming people want in. All right. Yeah. Pretty soon, you know, it, it's kind of scattered. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's a wonderful world in which we live. Everybody's going really, really batshit, you know? I mean, it, it's... it's uh, and I, and I don't like I don't like liberals. I've, I've said that I don't like liberals because Phil Oaks used to say that uh, uh, liberals are uh, people are, are uh, ten people who are ten degrees to the left in good times and ten degrees to the right when it affects them personally. <laughs> you know uh, that it, I've always believed. Say you're a leftist, piss everybody off, but say you're a leftist. Then you say where you are. You know, liberal is kind of, they waffle. You can't trust them. A liberal, yeah. Well, progressive is the new liberal. Yeah. Progressive. Oh, I hate progressive. I hate progressive. I hated that term. Uh, well, it progress. you know, progressing. It's got a little bit of momentum involved. But it, yeah. it, you know what it is? What I hated about progressive is these were people who are worse than liberals. Because these were people who were afraid to call themselves liberals. <laughs> All right? So they're even worse than liberals because they were afraid to, to tell people, hey, I'm a liberal. No, you're not. You're progressive. I'm a leftist. Where? What are you? 
Will? Well, I'm a third generation uh, factory rat from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Well, you got to be to the left. So I started out on the left on the 40 yard line, you know, on the left. And now I'm on the five yard line. I, how the fuck did that happen? I used to be, you know, a little left of center, and then they just dragged the playing field. I stayed in the same place. Well, uh, the the fact of the matter is, that, uh, look look at look at yourself in the mirror and look at the gray beard, and you'll see why you're not as left as you were a few years ago. Although I'm still, I'll tell you, the older I get, the more left I become, because I'm seeing how they really fuck over old people. <laughs> you know why? Why am I paying? I have Medicare. Why am why why are they only paying eighty percent? Why? Yeah, then you got to get the supplemental plan, and then you have to get a dental plan. Oh, well, and if, you, you if you don't have the supplemental plan, 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 you're screwed. And the supplemental plan is at least, depending on where you live, two hundred dollars a month. Yeah, you know. So I mean, in the end, you're paying for your health insurance <laughs> all the, all the way, and you're paying for it by the way with Medicare because it's taken out of your Social Security. And then when it comes to the end of the year, I found this out from my from my man my, then, <laughs> my, my accountant this year because he just filed my taxes. He said, "You know why you get money back from New York State, and and I also get a modest amount back from California. I think I got nine dollars back this year from California." But uh, in 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 New York, um, uh, they don't charge tax on your Social Security or pensions, right? So that's why I get money back. The government, on the other hand, taxes your Social Security and taxes your pensions. Now, if you don't have anything else but your Social Security and it's only like 15,000 a year or something, then you're not going to pay any taxes at all. But anything over that, you're gonna. I I have to pay taxes on my on my social security because I have other money coming in. I have to pay money on my after a pension. So, what is this? What is this country that makes us pay for something we should be getting for nothing? You know, and yeah. especially since we're paying for it anyway. We already paid for it. Yeah, we paid into it. And then I asked him, "Well, hey, health insurance is that tax deductible?" He said, "No." So what we pay for health insurance. Yeah. I don't think it's tax deductible. I think it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. I think it is. At least I've been taking it. Well, I think, no, I think, I think maybe <laughs> that, I, I think, I, don't know I think maybe company. that is what we were talking about is her company. We were thinking of going off of their, their health plan and having her company pay for our supplemental, which would give us a lot more than we're getting with their plan. And, and, um, uh, paying uh, paying into our uh, the uh, Part D, but the only way they can do that is by cutting her a check every month for the amount, oh. and then we pay it. But then at oh. the end of the year, that becomes income. Yeah. So yeah. we'd have to pay more taxes. It's crazy, you know. Me, it's just nuts. And I, well, it, fortunately, it, I make so little money that uh, I don't really have to worry about taxes that much. Yeah, well, you know, my wife makes a decent amount. And then you add my Social Security and her Social Security into it, and, you know, we're bringing in enough that we get a fairly decent, hefty bill every year, you know. And and a lot of it isn't paid back that much. I mean, um, I've had to take less Social Security because we told Social Security to take less so we'd have more money for taxes at the end of the year. Yeah. Ah. But all I'm saying is, is that I go more to the left because I am just pissed at the way they treat old people in this country. Right. Came I all mean, the way back. That yeah. was very shouldn't good. I? Oh. Shouldn't I? After all the these best. years, after all these years, shouldn't I get some kind of benefit for being in Alta Caca? Shouldn't <laughs> uh, you know? Sh shouldn't they say, "Hey, there, there, dear man"? For years, you've been paying taxes into this country, and you've been making money for this country, and you've been productive, productive citizen. Here, here's here's all your the health you'll ever need, all the insurance you'll ever need for your health. And by the way, let's give you like a month's vacation in another country, which some countries do do that. I think England does that for their wow. old people. A you, month's vacation in another country. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they get to pick the country. 
I probably. I mean, if yeah. you if you want to go to Afghanistan, who would want to go? Let's go to Afghanistan, dear, on vacation. Oh yes, or I hear there's any, a I hear there's yeah. a lovely resort there. <laughs> yeah, you can see the you can see the uh, the poppy fields. Yeah, you never hear about people going to Afghanistan for a vacation. No. Or it's, no, it's probably uh, never been really. It's kind of a mountainous desert. Yeah. Deserty kind of, but you never hear about anybody going to uh, Saudi Arabia for a vacation, do you? No, but uh, Qatar. Qatar, well, you got Qatar, uh, and I have a I have a caller to my show who lives in Dubai. Dubai, you know, yeah, but these Everybody goes these, to Dubai these, to get these drunk. are these are Emirates, you know, and they're so independent, and what they have to live on is tourist money. That's one of their big deals. So they're friendly, and they say, come on, we got great stores, and we got great uh, golf courses, and so on. No, come to Saudi Arabia where your wife can't drive, you know, <laughs> right? Where your wife's going to have to be covered for the entire visit. I don't think yeah. people are going there. Dressed like a grieving beekeeper. Exactly, exactly. But um, what do you think about Korea now? Korea launched those that missile over Japan. Is this guy really nuts? Is I know that, that was shit a, crazy. That was the big thing two weeks ago was thermonuclear chicken, and then uh, two weeks ago uh, it was all about racism, and then this week it's all about Harvey. So it's so exciting. It's always something. It's always something. But the thing is, with uh, Kim Jong Un. A couple of months, weeks ago, <laughs> after Trump threatened him or whatever, he backed off. He said, well, we're not going to do this and we're not going to build new. We're not going to send this stuff to Guam, uh, you know, whatever. And he, he backed out of that and everybody went, see, Trump got him to back out. Well, I'm sorry, lobbing a missile over Japan is not him making him Kim Jong-un uh, back off. No, he hasn't backed off. No, he just kind of went uh, uh, f uh, underground for a, a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. This, well, I mean, the fact that both of these guys, you know, are, are they both got daddy issues. They're both, uh, uh, you know, trigger happy, nuclear powered leaders, world leaders. And yeah, both both these guys. And neither one, you know, has anything to lose because Trump's. Uh, his approval rating couldn't go lower because <laughs> you know, he's got his base. I mean, there's going to be 32 percent of America that are, you know, stupid, greedy or mean. Um, and, and they're going to support them no matter what. Well, look, so, we, we, we understand uh, the we understand and uh, care about the, we know about the stupid, you know, and they're never going to change. No, but no, but because yeah, they don't like Hillary. And and, he, and greedy. He, there's, then there's the greedy. Yeah, but we say stupid, and we're saying it not to make them diminish them, but because they are fucking stupid. That's it. I agree. You know, and and um, uh, or mean. Or, Some of them are just mean. Yes, but the, I think we saw the mean in uh, Charlottesville. Those are the mean ones, uh, and the stupid. So you have various. You have stupid and mean. You have stupid and greedy. You have greedy and mean, and you have the full trifecta: stupid, greedy, and mean. The stupid, greedy, and mean. That sounds like a law firm. <laughs> uh, it, 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 I, I just, I'm, I'm amazed by the. You know, it, we we have a tendency when the other side disagrees with us to say they're stupid. But in this case, we're talking about truly stupid people. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're not talking this about. Not, this is not rhetorical stupid. This uh, is actual stupid. This and listen, I'll stupid. give it to them that they voted for Trump because they thought he wasn't going to be like the other guys. He was going to clean out the swamp and oh, that he. Oh, he, he right but, but whatever. New York City real estate developer. He's part of he's part right. of he's part of the other swamp across the uh, across town. OK, but basically he's still part of a swamp. But the point is, I can see the people, you know, were they bought the campaign rhetoric or they didn't like Hillary, which I don't blame them. I was not crazy about Hillary. I mean, as a candidate, she was terrible. She should have turned around to him and said, back off, creep. Then yeah, I would have really sure. been feeling sure. good about voting for her. And I think that would have won her the election. I agree with you. I agree. 
you know? That was a defining moment. Yes, the next day the paper people would say, oh, look, she's a, she's a pushy woman or whatever. And let them say it. But they're going to have respect for you. But anyway. Uh, Back off, creep. But I can see the people voted for him. I can see reasons why they decided to or whatever. You know, they thought life was going to be better. But anybody that would vote for him right now is it's stupid. Stupid. With all the evidence that's been thrown in your face about you know about this so uh of course they got fox news saying that uh all these stories that are coming up about russia uh they don't count and you know i mean they got breitbart news saying that there's a conspiracy against trump and the deep state that's the big new uh buzzword on the right the deep state that's everybody who's connected who's against him and that includes Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. They're members of the deep state. So uh, you can see he, he's playing on paranoid fears. And, and yeah, I mean, there is a reason why. And you're right. They're stupid. And they're, they're, voting, they're, they're, they're voting against their own best interest. You know. They're voting against the, the universe's best interests. Yeah. The, the existence of the universe and the solar system and the hemisphere. Well, the these, these were the people who, when presented with, do you, what do you think of Obamacare? I hate it. What do you think of the Affordable Care Act? Oh, well, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Uh, these yeah. are people who didn't these know. People who want the coal industry back. Right. And eight track tapes Look, and sock garters. And I, I don't think any of us agree that Obamacare is a great idea on the whole it, it it's basic thrust is good it's just its implementation has to be improved yeah. okay not done away with improved nobody ever uses a word improved you know no it's replace and obliterate or whatever they're they're saying but the word improved never seems to come into play there and no uh, and this is what happened you know with Social Security and with Medicare. I mean, there were tweaks, and both sides saw the necessity to, you know, improve them and to change right. how you got there and to to cut off here and add a little there. And, uh, you know, that used to happen. We're living in an age where you couldn't improve, uh, uh, get everybody to approve of a fart coming out of Mitch McConnell's ass. Okay, so, you know... They, I'm a little curious about the circuitous nature of that uh, reference, but uh, I. Well, totally, I just wanted to say fart coming out of Mitch McConnell's ass. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would have said mouth. I was surprised you went with that. <laughs> I was really expecting. Well, mouth. you're the comedian. I'll defer to you. No, 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 no. I, that was an you, original. You could improve uh, my yeah. material. You're allowed to. No, uh, Mitch McConnell is is uh, becoming almost human in the face of trump yeah yeah and a lot of people are i guess hey look you know you we've spent actually more time than we usually do we oh no we went for 27 minutes usually and we no, do, it's 25 we do, usually do 25 yeah yeah right. yeah so anything you want to leave us with any uh, wise uh, what's your birthday oh december 18th oh okay so you don't have to send me a present yet no, yeah. no. And by the way, at my age, and because I am on a fixed income, I always tell people, they say, what do you want for your birthday? I said, send money. <laughs> you know, send, send money. <laughs> you know, I'm, it's not like when I was a kid and I wanted to open the package and find out what the toy was I got. I want money. Okay, just for my birthday, everybody, send me money. What are you looking up? Uh, no, I'm uh, 1940, right? 1939. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, because I uh, updated uh, you with your address and it had a little birthday slot. What, 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 what year were you born in? 52. Yeah. So your whole referencing of the world starts at 52. Right. Mine Seven years at, after the war. So I was a war baby. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, that really sounds old, doesn't it? Hey, I'm a war baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that the other day. Yeah, 1964 uh, was 19 years after the end of the war. Yeah, 
And I remember our parents talking about the war and, and me thinking, oh, my God, that was 19 years ago. That was 20 years ago. Get over it, old man. And 20 years ago from today was 1997. <laughs> you know, I found out the other day there are people that the world's divided up into two groups of people. Those who know who Jerry Lewis was and those who don't. Yeah. You know? I mean, let's face it, if you were born in the 70s, yep. maybe yeah. you, you, you don't know or care about Jerry Lewis. No. You know? He wasn't part of the, your zeitgeist. You're right. But he was in yours. Yeah, yeah. Because they came, they came uh, to big prominence. Barely, around. though. Barely. Because they had their heyday in the late 40s and early 50s. You yeah. know? And then he, Dean Martin contributed to it and and... Jerry Lewis did a little with his movies, but by the time I was old enough to see his movies, he was making some stinkers, you know, so that was the problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, listen, always great talking to you, uh, Will Durst. Uh, it, is a, it is a pleasure and uh, a, a... Had a great time, Alex Bennett. You stay out of trouble. And, Let's do this again. Of course, a couple of weeks from right now. I'm totally in. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Durst. Okay, I stopped the recording, and uh, let me see here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pushing the wrong buttons, and then I'm doing all kinds of things. Oh, well, the hell with it. Let me, uh, let me do this. Okay, there we go. That was Will Durst. I mean, I could start Will all over again. And he was getting a lot of people watching, by the way. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I love about Will. Uh, no, I was trying to go to the theme, and I'm not doing anything right these days. My whole technical abilities are going out the window, and I think it's, I'm, I'm really believing it's the beginning of Alzheimer's. I really do. It's the onset of something like Alzheimer's, or akin to, or something, who knows. Anyway, let me see here. Do I have my Skype line open? Oh, yeah, I got the Skype line. I'll open it up now. Uh, you know, I got to do something right. See, I was going to play a theme and everything, and then I was going to, I was going to run the flag, and then I was going to come back and say, "Hi, well, thank you. See, I'm wearing the same shirt and the same hat. Therefore, that must not have been a recording, right? Wrong. Anyway, Will was pre-recorded, uh, but uh, it looks great, and it gets a big audience. Oh, who's calling? Uh, let me see. Who shall I pick up first? Oh, well, I'll pick up Mike, and then I'll pick up uh, Phil. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. figured uh, I'd save you from having Mike be the first guy. Well, he was the first one, actually, but wait a minute. I think I hung up on him, actually. Huh? Let, me, let me add. Well, wait a minute. I'm trying to add uh, uh, Rob Alfano. I'm hanging up on everybody, okay? All right. You I'm hanging, okay, having a hanging up on everybody. Okay, right. how do I hang up on everybody? I go like this. Uh, here, here we go. Yeah, we go like that. And um, let me see here. Let me um, let me see here. Is Rob calling? No. Let me see here. Let me get rid of everybody. There we go. And uh, it, 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 oh God, let me stop, stop that one. Okay. And uh, anyway, if people want to call now, call me, and let's see if I can get this all together at the same time okay phil whoever uh call me this will uh, nothing nothing's been going right oh well here here we go here we go there there here comes phil meyer and then, right. let me see let me add that to the group and let me add oh god rob to the group and let me add a phone number to the group here Who who's calling us on the phone this is Schmooty. Hey, Schmooty, how are you? Schmooty's becoming a regular. Hey, you don't have the Alzheimer's. You have big handzimers. Oh. See, now I just pushed the wrong button again, and we got the flag. Here, I'll push the button well, now. I'm and still they, here. And, uh, yeah. No, you're 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 no longer flagging. You're uh, I got the photo on both. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we're, 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 you're live on both. We're fine. We're fine. I'm. I. I no, do. you don't have Alzheimer's. I remember you working on the computers, you know, and I'd probably be in the other room watching TV, and you'd be having a conniption fit. But man, do you have huge hands! 
Uh, yeah, but uh, now those huge it. hands, the problem with the huge hands is, is these huge hands uh, have a hard time typing because they're so huge. And pushing buttons. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Phil Myers with us, and uh, Rob Alfano has joined us. And, uh, um, you know, uh, I, uh, I have just, no, I've, I, I literally in the last couple of days have been going insane. Why? At, at why? Well, uh, to begin with, I had to, and, and Shmoody, this is how we do it. Just, you know, draw, jump in whenever you need to jump in, okay? Because we can't see you. And what we do when we I have know. To, with people with cameras, they raise their hands and we can see them. Okay. Except me. You know what? I'm going to get off the line so you can take other calls, but I'll probably pop on on the camera on Friday. Oh, okay, good. He can good. take as many calls as he wants. Don't, don't worry about you it. Know, you, you don't have to Just leave. Stay. You, you can stay right here. You know. Yeah. Well, no, honey. What it is is it's a school night. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then, okay. Call us Friday. Use the camera because I, America would love to see uh, this lovely woman I used to go out with. All right. Okay. Hey, love you. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye, schmoots. Bye. Don't ask us about schmooty, folks. We're not even. We're not even going there. Okay. Uh, on this Korean uh, well, missile. Let's, well, let's not talk about that yet. Okay. Let's not get to any of that uh. yet. Well, I know why uh, he launched it and oh, what it really was. Oh, okay. Well, we'll find out later, won't we? Absolutely. Yes, okay. Anyway. There's we'll, your teaser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's my geezer as well. Um, uh, Look in the mirror. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't you know it? Uh, yeah. Anyway, I uh, uh, I am uh, like uh, just, uh, uh, just, it was just such a weekend. You know, here, here, you know, the biggest problem I had is here. Here's what I found out. Fios doesn't have an email account thing any, anymore, Rob. They can't. They quit it about a couple of months ago, saying that they wanted to concentrate on all the other services they offer rather than that. I don't know how difficult because it, nobody uses that anymore. You don't find very many people that care about the provider's email. Well, I think the reason is for the reason that I'm suddenly found myself in this pickle because I'm I'm quitting uh, uh, Spectrum and I'm right. going to Fios and by doing that I lose an email address that I've had for god uh, 15 years maybe six uh, as long as i've been in new york which is since 2013 okay three three uh, 2003 excuse me see that's that's how punchy and, and fucked up i am all right anyway well, um, you didn't want to use the uh, other one you had that other domain uh alex bennett because i had too many problems with uh, getting it to work okay, oh, okay. and it's <laughs> it's longer it was it was literally at, well to begin with it was Alex Bennett at alexbennett.com. dot com. Yeah, but I said go to Alex at Alex Bennett. Well, don't uh, I the trouble with Alex at I just in fact signed <clears throat> off Alex yeah. Bennett at alexbennett dot com because all it did was become this repository for nothing but massive amounts of spam mail. Mm. Once I got it hooked up and I turned it on here, uh, all of a sudden about 200 pieces of mail that have been piling up got yeah. to me and every one of them was spam so i got rid of that i do have another one and i mm -hmm. finally got it to work but i'm sitting there with uh, on godaddy with gabnet.com and uh, that's very short uh, net rather uh, gabnet.net see that's how punchy i am gabnet.net and I have had uh, a, an address there for a long time using what is a very small token email thing they give us when you sign up for their websites, okay? But it won't hold a lot of mail and stuff like that. So I went to another program, but uh, that is larger, and I pay them about 130 bucks a year for this so that I can have, and I'm not gonna give it out, an email address that is simple, very, very simple, okay, and very easy for people to remember, even if they don't, uh, even if they don't write it down. Um, but the problem I had was they've got two kinds of systems now: POP systems and IMAP systems. You're aware of this, right, Rob? That's and, correct. And I don't like the IMAP system, and I'll tell you why I don't like the IMAP system. Because number one, it has a tendency to decide what uh, 
what it's going to do. In other words, if you, uh, if you, um, if it does something on its own server, and my problem was it seemed to throw a lot of people into junk mail. Okay, it'll throw it into junk mail on your on your computer. It'll throw it into junk mail on any program that you are going to that IMAP with. And so I was having nothing but that trouble after spending all that money, okay? And we don't care about your Kermit puppet, by the way. Uh, I just got uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So, so throw, get rid of it. Just, we don't even want to see it. Get it out of there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jeez. Things that, we'll, we'll buy you a doll for Christmas. Anyway, uh, I found that the, uh, the, uh, it, 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 what, it, what, it, what it was doing it was still throwing stuff into junk mail, even on the gabnet.net thing, because it was an IMAP. And so I quit that, and they put me on another. We're going to put me on another program. They quit that program. They put me on another program. This is going on for hours and hours and all day. And that one won't work because they want to uh, pair it up with whatever I'm doing with Microsoft. And I said, that's going to screw up my Skype, I think. And I don't want anything screwing up my Skype. So I said, put me back to the way we were at the very beginning. So they give me all my money back because I get 30 days out. And they put me back to the original. And then she says, let me talk to my supervisor. And she said, you know, we can give you that one with the IMAP. Only you just sign on as a pop. And it becomes a pop uh, uh, account. And uh, I did that, and everything works perfectly. So I've just been testing on and off just to make sure everybody got my mail and I got their mail and so on, and it's working perfectly. So it solved that, but it was driving me nuts. It drove me as nuts as the cable company did with those days of trying to get them to bring back my, uh, my uh, all house uh, DVR. Don't breathe so heavy either, Mike. Um, uh, my my uh, my DVR, uh, a, a, a whole house DVR, which wasn't coming back in spite of the fact that they had restored it. By the way, let me just tell you, I then was so fed up, I called Fios and said, when can you get here? And they, they're installing really? tomorrow. Meanwhile, yesterday, Monday, all of a sudden, the all house DVR is working. Yeah, but I don't give a shit. I'm saving money with FiOS. Oh yeah, FiOS is nice. I'm, I'm, I'm paying FiOS 229 bucks a month as opposed to 259, which it would have been with the new Spectrum thing, okay? So, uh, but all these things have just been driving me crazy. I'm exhausted. So uh, tomorrow, girlfriend is um, calling a shrink. And I mean, oh. no, really, I'm going to go to a shrink. Really? I can't handle these things anymore. They're just too depressing for me. I get too, why, uh, you know, uh, depressed by what they are. I'm, I'm expecting tomorrow night we're going to try and do a show, and we won't be able to because we've got a brand new, because we're going to have a brand new Internet system. It'll probably work fine, but I'm sitting here warning you in advance that if there isn't a show, it's because Fio's fucked up, okay? <laughs> and, and they will. Yeah. And, and they were a kibosh on you. Well, you yeah. didn't find they fucked up, right, Rob, when you had them? They were rock solid. I, I didn't have any problem. In other words, I shouldn't, have any, I shouldn't have any problem with their internet getting onto my no, audio. No, in Virginia. Huh? That was in Virginia. I'm in Queens, and it's great, Alex. I'm telling you. Yeah, but you don't know. You don't use it like I do. No, I know, but I mean, you don't use it for what I use it for. I use it, I use it to get this audio out there. I use it to get the video out there. You know, I'm, the only thing I can go on is when I had Time Warner for my internet, it was always going down with files. Well, I, I had a girl. Had I had time. a girlfriend that was always doing that, so I mean that was fine. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what you want in that case. Yeah, in that case, yeah, you don't want a girlfriend that doesn't go down on you. Right. Right. I know. But no, I mean, it, but it, it it's been an absolutely frustrating week, and I'm beginning to realize that my problem is that I worry about every little detail. It's, it's a, a control thing with me, and uh, I don't, uh, you know, I, I, have, I, can't cope, I can't cope with it. What? No, it's not OCD. I'm, no, OCD. I, or something? I don't care if my pencil's here or there, okay? I think All right, I don't have OCD. Uh, I, it, this is, uh, as they say, um, uh, what's his name? Swimming to Cambodia. Uh, God, I'm trying to remember his name now. See, that's part of my problem these days. 
uh, said that it's a con that he did the same does the same thing, and it's a control issue. We want to control. We're, we're controlling our lives by anticipating everything that could go wrong. Like I'm saying right. to you, tomorrow night we're not going to be able to do a show because I'm sure this goddamn new internet won't work for me. It'll probably work perfectly, you know. And they're going to wonder why I've got it wired all over the house, but you know, it's it's. Be I went to see you. I, I had the same problem. And I, my problem also involved people, not just things. Like I would, uh, I would have problems like the way people yeah. thought of me and 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 Ooh. all that. And so, I went to a therapist, and we were talking about it. And he picks up a hula hoop, and he says, "Stand up, put this around you." And I said, "Oh, you're not going to ask me to do the the hula hoop, are you?" He said, "No." He said, "I want you to realize that anything outside that hula hoop." You can't control, so let it go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's really it helped me just thinking it that way. You can can only control you and nothing else, and so don't sweat the other stuff. Well, then I would and just that, I would just worry that's about something that pops into my head all the time yeah. when I get into that control freak kind of. I gotta what's going to happen, and I know what's going to happen before I get there. Yeah, but I don't know. You See, know? The, I have a, a, a maybe a different take on it. I believe that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and that when something negative happens, or I, uh, I'm, it's because I made it happen negative, or I caused uh, it to happen, and that I could also cause it to be positive, and um, you know, so, so you know, I, it, I don't know if it's the same thing as what you're going through, but I, I believe that I'm in control, and that I have the ability to cause something to work out or not work out. Well, you know. you know, I I don't trust in the world around me nor the services that are being provided me. And it, maybe that's my fault, but too many times I've been proven right. You know, I yeah, mean, you, uh, you this, can't this, this incident, the, the I, other people. Yeah, but you, you have to understand that it's it. I, I don't have a job. OK, I, I yeah. don't go to a job every day. This is a job, but it's something I do is it's a hobby. Okay, uh, you've made it a job. I, I made I've made it a job. Yeah, and you put the importance of a job on it. I put yes. That that's the other problem. If I didn't put the importance on it, I wouldn't care whether I had a show going on the air tomorrow. Night. Right. Okay. You know, if, you if, if, if I owned a radio station and the transmitter went down, I wouldn't say, eh, "Let it just be down. I don't give a shit." You know. Uh, no, I want this thing to work. When I didn't push things right, and everybody out there didn't mind, you know, it didn't change the show at all. But it bothered me that I didn't do it smoothly, and that I find it more and more difficult as I get older to do it smoothly. I'm I'm hurt. There was no theme. What uh, theme? <laughs> yeah, I didn't play it. Oh, well, I could play it for you if that's what you want. Well, you know, like, yeah, I hope so. You're really fuck with Alex's head, aren't you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You want a theme? Here we go. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've yeah, never yeah. heard And the trouble before. with that is that one is from another machine, and it's in mono. Let's see here. There we go. This Stereo. is GabNet, Stereo, the folks. great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. By the way, I should have Rob Alfano lip sync, like, you know. You should have done it live. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I am so sick of hearing everything I hear on GabNet. I cannot wait to get into a studio again. Yeah, well, I'm, we can't wait till you do, too, because we have had... Uh, uh, you can just redo every promo. <laughs> yeah. Have you written some new ones? Me? No, no, Alex. What? Have you written some new promos for him? No, yeah. not yet. Dissipate. Not no. yet, you know. No. Um, because I don't know if my internet will be working by then. Uh, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> you, you know that you, you you also can't um beat yourself up for other for other people i mean uh, you know you expect you want things uh but you, you can't let it uh, affect you and you can choose to not let it affect you the same That's way right. um you know no. that what, what's that book by the guy in the concentration camp uh victor frankel um 
uh, I read I read it. You know, anyway, uh, you know, uh, you can you can choose to uh, let people make you unhappy to, and you can also choose to be happy. It's well, a choice. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not. Choice. I'm not so worried about people making me unhappy. Answer I have so little. Me, I have sir. so little to do with other people since I never leave the apartment, basically, except to go get food. Uh, yeah. That uh, I, I, I'm not worried about other people or my relationship to them. What relationships I have are good and they're solid. But no, I'm talking about the services when you get disappointed well, when something I, doesn't no, work. What, no, what, what irritates me is. Nobody. I mean, for instance, at that cable company, nobody knew what the other guy was doing. They had no, no concept of it. And they did, every time I called, I got a different person. And every time I called, I got a different solution. And I got right. told a different thing. And one mm -hmm. guy said, well, we have our engineering department working on it. The next guy said, oh, let me just push a button here. <laughs> you know, oh, is it working it's, yet? It no, it'll, it'll work in 10 <laughs> minutes. And then it didn't work in 10 minutes. So then I called back and it was some other person saying, I don't even know what a whole house DVR is. You know, I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was insane. And it, and it drove me literally nuts there. Then not being able to get uh, this new email address to work was bothering me too. But it was as simple as me signing on, having uh, configuring it as a POP account as opposed to an IMAP account. But nobody told me that until finally this girl who really cared about her job was trying to figure out what she could do and asked her uh, her uh, supervisor. And they said, well, have them sign in as a POP account. And the POP account, it's fine. It's rock solid, you know. So, uh, I mean, I tell you what it is, you, you know, it's gabnet.net, something at gab, gabnet.net, and you can only imagine what it is, you know. What do you mean? But, well, I, huh? Is it anything better? I yeah, sent sure. you a copy of what it was. Yeah. Now, don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, I sent you too many emails. I apologize. Don't say it. You sent him emails too? Don't send me another fucking email. And by the way, you're driving Shecky nuts too. As much as I like Tony, I had to block him. He did. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I, I know him. I know you're working in that <laughs> you're working in that little hat place folding boxes all day. <laughs> and you got nothing else to do but email I people saying, difficult. I got a Kermit puppet. Who gives a fuck? He's got heat stroke. Huh? Yeah, yeah I actually stroke. think about what you guys are doing. He's texting the things he does. What? <laughs> he's got heat stroke, so he's texting the Kermit. Actually, now, mind you, don't take this as any. Uh, don't take this as anything like I don't like you, Tony, because I think you're. I think you're a sweet, decent guy, but yes, you're a yeah. fucking pest. <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment. Don't okay. Would, oh, if you want to take it as a compliment, go right ahead. It wasn't meant that way, but go <laughs> ahead anyway. <laughs> So anyway, all this has been driving me up a tree, and I didn't realize you were struggling with the things. You know, and today I was worrying because tomorrow I'm interviewing my uh, my ex-wife, who the one who has had pancreatic cancer, and uh, I'm supposed to do her at. I had to move it back because the 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 appointment for the files people is from two to four, uh, and uh, I didn't know. When they would, you hopefully they'll come at two. Well, in that case, I was going to interview her at one, and that was didn't give me enough uh, wiggle room in case something went wrong. So then I moved her back to twelve thirty my time, and then finally I just wrote her and moved her back to to nine o'clock her time, which is noon my time, because they're supposed to call like an hour ahead of time, and I don't want to be doing my interview when they call. This is the kind of thing I you think in my mind, and then I got to do something about it, you know. It, it drives me nuts. I really should just say, fuck it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I'll worry about it later. But I had yep. this, this fear of not having an email address that people could get a hold of me on. And so now I have that one. I also do have that one at alexbennett.com. But alexbennett.com is too long. You know, it's too long for people to type, you know. And Alex uh, Bennett at Alex you know, Bennett. Uh, people are, people are accustomed to some of these longer uh, email addresses. And, and for the most part, once you send the first email, you never have to type it again. You know what I found that's very interesting, folks? And I think uh, uh, it's a hint I've learned in the last day or so. And that was that I, um, uh, that I have um, um, uh, 
the uh, let me let me just make myself even smaller because I don't want to cut in that much into uh, uh, the picture of uh, lovely picture of Jeff there. Anyway, uh, if more people would call, I can then make myself larger. Anyway, where was I? Um, You're already larger than life. What was I? What was I saying? I was. Oh, oh yeah. I wanted to tell people this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started having problems with uh, passwords, and I know there's one password, and I can't figure out how that works. And there's something else password, and I don't can't figure out how that works. Do you know the best password bank you have is if A you notebook. if no if you use Chrome. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not secure at all. Well, I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know yeah. what I did? It's, I got it's this e- little book. It's easy, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You can go into your settings, you can go into your security, and then you can <laughs> go into a list of all the email, all the all the sites that you have a uh, 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 what do you call it for? Password for. Password. And they're all starred out, but you then can click on it and say I reveal it. And then they'll ask for your password, and you give me your password, and it will reveal it to you. So that what you if never you can't really the password. What? No, no. I, I can't remember the password. Do you no, the know, password to your whole computer, you can't remember. Sometimes not. You know, I have gotten a little notebook, like and now I have vowed that every time I put in a password, I'm going to write it down, and I'm going to have it in this little notebook. Are you and kidding? So no, because I have a notebook too, though. I do that. This, like this is the problem. Uh, uh, for instance, today, mm-hmm. uh, I had to go and add equipment to uh, the NPS, which is uh, Nikon Professional Services. You, know, you have to have so many points to qualify for. So uh, I went to add equipment. I couldn't remember the password. So I had to say, send the password to this email. Wait, 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 wait before, th- before you go any further, you had to yeah. have points. How do you get the points? How do you accumulate the points by spending money? Uh, no, you have uh, to own uh, so many uh, camera bodies and so many lenses. <laughs> well, that's and, what and I'm and saying. You're spending money. Oh, good. I'm well, honored. I'm on the. I'm get. I'm getting. I'm in part of this special no, no, club. No, there's, because there's a whole process to becoming. I was recommended by a Nikon ambassador. You know, they, there's 20 Nikon <laughs> ambassadors. Me. I mean, I had. A, I, 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 I. I should have gone for that when I bought girlfriend two Nikon's. No, you, you you can't uh, you can't get it uh, with uh, those kinds of bodies. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know you you had to have it. They had to see your website. They they had to see that you actually do photography. Okay. Well, uh, this that's boring. I don't yeah. Lose well, anyway, uh, this is one of them. Today, I had to you know change the password so that I could write it down and put it in the book. Uh, uh, sometimes you type in the password and you know that it's one of the it's one of the usual suspects, but it's not working. I ha- I have th- I have three accounts for Skype, okay. Yeah, and the, the other one is a private one I use when I do the interviews and things like that. Mm-hmm. I had the name of it wrong, and it kept locking me out. I couldn't find the password, so I just created a new Skype, pa- a new Skype. Uh, site for me and I gave him 10 bucks towards uh, the credit or whatever and then when I signed out of it I promptly forgot what the new name was and what the password was so that forever will be a Skype that will not be used meanwhile I wound up I I wound up my other one uh, is uh, well I won't tell you what it is but the other one is um, a private one and mm-hmm. I thought it was Bolo 210, and it wasn't. And I kept typing in Bolo 210, and they kept saying, you've tried too many times, and blah, 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 oh, blah. Oh, you got in trouble. You know, and, and then it turned out, uh, and this is an address I've been using forever, and I couldn't remember it. So I think I'm getting Alzheimer's. Either that no, or I'm so fried from it. all this computer shit, you know. So anyway, I, uh, I all I'm saying to people is if you have Chrome, you've probably got, your passwords because you may I notice they old. come up when you go somewhere you know or when hey, you change it they will say do you want to change it what how's uh how's uh, marjorie doing she emailed me that she got one password and she uh asked me a few questions and she get back to me if she had any others and hmm. she hasn't i don't know i'll ask her you're asking her oh. right now and she'll probably say something to me tomorrow oh, but, okay because uh, she did email originally said she was going to Go for it. The only it's advantage. It's a great program. Yeah, but it, it costs it, it costs three ninety five a month. That's for starters. Where the Chrome thing is free and. But the, 
But well, Chrome is anybody gets a hold of your laptop, very easy for them to they get all your passwords. No, because you can't see them if you go there. But you can, can't you, uh, doesn't it autofill the... Uh... No, it, do, it doesn't, it auto, oh, yeah, it autofills when you go to a site, but you don't see yeah. what the pa what the password is. Right, but it doesn't matter if you're in. Well, you know, I mean, what, doesn't that, isn't that what 1Password does? When you go to a site, it knows yeah, but, what the password is and fills it out? Yeah, but you have to unlock the, you have to unlock the vault for that to happen, and then it stays open for a period of time that you set, like... 10 minutes or so if mm. i go to my bank site then i put in my master the only password i have to remember is the master password to the vault and then once I, i'm in i right click choose you know one password and it automatically knows that i'm at my bank's password yeah. i click yeah, on well, it logs you know, me in. i don't i you know as i said not uh, to mention my bank password is yeah. probably about 18 characters long oh really <laughs> My, it's some, my, it generated my, it. Mine's as short these. as I can make it. In fact, yeah, well, my that, ATM number is four. And the reason it's four, I'll, no, I'll tell you why it's four. Is your ATM number a 20 long? No, you that's can't. Four digits. You can't. When I went oh, to the Europe, bank won't a, let you. A, few, yeah, a few years ago, when I went to Europe and I tried to sign into my ATM account, which I then had seven letters or numbers that were my password right? Uh, most banks wouldn't recognize me because they only take four numbers over there. Or at that time, they only took four numbers. So when I came back, I changed it to four numbers. And eventually, every bank in America now, the ATM number is four numbers, four digits right. or whatever. Uh, and, uh, you know, so you can't, you can't do that. But all I'm saying That's is... That's actually a pin, huh? though. Huh? That's a pin, though. That's it, not it, a password. It, okay. I, I'll be much happier when everything is biometrics, either a thumb or a retina, uh, and you don't have to do I'll any of this I'll be happy when stuff. I finally Alzheimer's well, really yeah. sets in and everybody else is going to have to fucking worry about this for me. <laughs> you know? And I can just sit there and drool and, and be happy that I don't have to deal with any of this shit anymore. But it just it just bothers me that sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm going, you know, it wants my name. What is my name? You know, I mean, it's gotten to that point where you just get so punchy from being at this computer trying to get these things to work. I mean, but anyway, I have an email address. So and then I'm using then what I'm doing, I'm separating yeah. things up. I also have my Apple accounts. OK, and all those all my business stuff, you know. Stuff that where I pay stuff or I get bills or if there's something wrong, like, you know, like, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? The comp like Voscast, which does the stuff here. Uh, I, um, I should make sure I have that one changed. Um, uh, I made those all uh, my MAC addresses, all the business stuff. And all the you personal know. stuff, I made my GabNet address. And uh, and all the stuff I'm going to do, like Bed Bath and Beyond, which could be spam, I'm going to use my Gmail. Right. Hey, you know, uh, back uh, when you first moved to Sausalito, uh, you know, you said, "Hey, well, you know, everybody calls me Ben," mm -hmm. and I was just in the habit of calling you Alex. And I remember having a conversation, you, Susan, and myself, yeah. and uh, you said, well, hey, maybe I should just go by Alex. You you using, you know, these two names for 50 years, 60 years. Uh, well, 50, uh, not 50 years, but, you know, how, you know, how do you handle it? It's almost like, uh, you know, having... Well, you know, I, having it hasn't, it's never been a problem. It's no. never been a problem. Here's what here here here's how I've solved the fact. My name is really Bennett Schwarzman. Go ahead, steal my identity because, quite frankly, I have no they need. Can't even I, spell it. I have no need for it. Uh, yeah. And, and then I have the name Alex Bennett. Well, hmm. you know, I'm Alex Bennett everywhere. All right. So when it comes to business, I'm not Alex Bennett. I'm Bennett Schwarzman. You know, credit cards, things like that, are all Bennett Schwarzman. Don't worry, nobody can steal them. Just because nobody they know, can spell it, just just because they know not my name, and there happens to be a little more than that in it. But anyway, uh, it's never been a problem. When I had people make out checks to Alex Bennett, you know, I were, were, did something, they made it out to Alex Bennett. I simply endorsed it, Alex Bennett, and then endorsed it, Bennett Schwarzman. As long as you know, you can do that because you're not defrauding anybody. 
So I'm just doing something I have a right to do, and that's endorse a check to meet, and then for me to endorse that check and deposit it, which we used to do with checks. Uh, so far as my name is concerned, uh, my ex-wife Ronnie came up with the best way of handling it. She would just refer to me all the time as Bennett. So that if I was talking to somebody who knows me as Alex Bennett, it sounds affectionately like she's calling me by my last name. And if she's talking to somebody who knows me as Bennett Schwarzman, she's talking to me affectionately with my first name. So it always worked. It always worked out. So I never had a problem with it. Yeah. Not no, once, it, not not once did it bother me. So. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like I Jeff just, has. I question. just checked that our our online service Voscast does have my new. Uh, I've been going running around like crazy trying to figure out who haven't I done an address with. Uh, hello, Jeff. I just made you full hey. screen, and oh, yeah, yes, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, a friend of mine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're frozen here for a second, Jeff. Internet problem. We can hear it. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff. Are you there? Jeff, can you hear us? Yeah, he froze up. Oh, boy. Uh, somebody in his house must be playing Dungeons and Dragons or something. I don't know. <laughs> Hello, Jeff? Uh, let me see here. Let me hang up on him. Yeah, he'll call. Oh, oh there, there, he there you go. You were frozen there. You were frozen is this there. good, then? No, now you're still frozen. Got a problem. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's fine. Maybe I didn't pay the bill today. Well, no, it, 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 you're having some bandwidth problems, but keep going. Yeah. So, uh, oh yeah. So my my friend's brother-in-law uh, started having a little dementia mm -hmm. problems, and he couldn't remember things. And he ultimately one day he gets in a car and he goes to the dentist. And it's like 12 hours later than that, and he comes home. And he couldn't remember how to get home. Mm. That bad. That's what we're all afraid of, right? Yeah, but wait a minute. Did, did, this didn't happen all, this happened all at once? It didn't happen over a period of time? I suspect it did, but it was little subtle things. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's you're lost and you can't remember you can't remember where you live mm. and, and it's, you can hardly remember your name at the same time. i have problems with other people's names people that i've known for a long time and you know then i have these brain farts and eventually it comes to me but uh you know it's 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 amazing sometimes you go to introduce somebody and you, you've known these people for uh, a long time and it's like you hope that they say their name <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, the terrible part is, is sometimes I couldn't remember somebody's name because I've always been terrible with names. I'm just worse than I've ever been now. Okay. And, and uh, so I would always forget names. And so I would introduce somebody and uh, um, uh, I wouldn't introduce them. What I would say is, oh, I'd like you to meet my friend. This is, uh, this is Marjorie. And she'd say, hi. And then that person would say, well, I'm Bob. Hi. You know, well, sometimes they sometimes. wouldn't. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're yeah. standing there. They're waiting for you. Because to... yeah. um, <laughs> they don't remember oh, their own. Uh, uh, yeah. I've, the, I've, the, sometimes the, I'll, uh, sometimes when I am uh, see somebody I haven't seen for a long time or, or that other person hasn't seen me, that I, I'll say, you know, I'll just mention my name while I'm shaking his hand. Really? Just to get him to remind back to you, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, sometimes <laughs> I, I know I, I get it all the time and. And I go, oh, shit. I thought, I thought I had the problem I'm solved. Just say, How are you doing, uh, yeah, Kevin? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I thought I had that problem solved uh, yeah. when, I, uh, when I once said to somebody, uh, by the way, uh, how do you spell your first name? And they went, B-O-B. -B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a backwards. Huh? It's a, well, I usually ask them to spell their last name. Uh, oftentimes, a customer will walk into the store, yeah. somebody that you know might have given me fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in business, and I'm looking. I know, I know they're a customer, but you know they they have a question. And I say, well, how do you spell your last name? And then I run over to my computer, I put it <gasps> in that way, and I get my first name <laughs> as well. Yeah. But uh, it's you know. Uh, uh, 
it's a great fear that I I have, you know, and it, it's getting harder for me to, to do some things. Now, this may be because the last week has been very frustrating and very daunting and I'm just punchy from it, you know. And uh, the other thing is I take a Xanax sometime to go to sleep and I probably shouldn't because oh, it kind of so. makes you a little wonky. So I don't... When I take the NyQuil, it knocks me out. You take NyQuil? Only when I get like a cold or I feel like I can't sleep, it just knocks me right out. Like, I, I, know, I know it I'm knocks sleeping. you out and then it I'm knocks, it knocks you into the next day is what that is. Yeah, it's almost like a strange thing. I don't want really to fall asleep. This and is then the wake up, I'm always It's drunk. a combination of antihistamines and alcohol is what NyQuil is. I don't remember falling asleep. I just remember waking up. It's like, what happened? Rob, do you when need to take a sleeping the pill at all? Marsh, they, no, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't That's think if I have a cold really? sleep. I've just been uh, having, and then I go to bed and I think about stuff, and you know, and my feet are numb I, I, and they hurt. I have the radio on. Oh, I do that too. I, I have can to have the radio, have, on. the radio on. I know how to fall asleep uh, within three seconds. Uh, you put the earplugs in, you put GabNet on, and boom, you're out. You're out. We're the best <laughs> sleeping pill there is in the entire world. Uh, here's the he thing. Here, here, yeah. Uh, I have a problem with GabNet. I can't sleep to it anymore because no. the, the because the levels are so all over the place. So you know, like I because I, I, I have pro problems hearing, right? And there, are, when people have the, the the citizen paddle going, I can either hear the the the, the citizen panel really loud and the and the host not so much, right? Or the other way around, and so I I get frustrated by it because I can't put the radio loud enough. That it doesn't bother my wife to hear both. Wow. Oh, use earplugs. Oh, by the way, by the way, I, today I I made ribs tonight. Best ribs I've made so far. Superior, superior, just superior. And I've I've learned why the ribs are probably so good in my neighborhood when I buy them at the local grocery store rather than nope. Costco Is anywhere anywhere in the area. No, it's just because black people won't put up with lousy ribs. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so they can't sell bad ones here. You know, they can't get away with it. But anyway, so I made some ribs, and it takes like three different steps with three different times. And so I had echo, I have Echo in the kitchen. And I just went, Echo, set timer for 20 minutes. So that's for the first stage. And then it says, does it? And then when it goes off, no matter where you are in this house, you can hear the alarm. Oh, that's very good. So then I went, uh, 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 Echo, um, I set timer for an hour and 20 minutes, and it set for an hour and 20 minutes. And about a half hour in, I went, uh, Echo, how much time do I have left? And it told me. Now, there's a number of these. It's, it's great. It was great. It's great for cooking. I don't care if, yeah, if anything nice. else. It's great for cooking. Alex, there's there's Echo, and aren't there a couple of other devices that are available on the market? This one looks sure. like it's still. I, from what the reports are, this one's the best. The only really? the thing is, I mean, Google they, has one, and Apple's coming out with one. Yeah, but you know, what what they are is they're all proprietary to their system. Like for instance, yeah. I subscribe for. Three ninety nine a month to their Amazon everything. You can you can ask yeah. for any song they have in the Amazon library, right? And yep. and they'll it'll play it for you. Uh, hmm. You know, the other day I felt like hearing the Bobby Darren uh, Johnny Mercer album, and so I said, "Play Johnny uh, Bobby Darren and Johnny Mercer," and there it comes, one after the other, the whole album while I'm working or in the kitchen and whatever. Uh, but if you go over to Apple, if they build one, you know it's only going to work with iTunes. Yeah, and then it's know. going to cost ninety nine cents. They'll bill you. I think they're calling it three forty nine, but it's supposed to have superior sound. So whatever that means, three hundred and forty nine dollars. It's got a lot of speakers. It's, it's got a lot yeah. of tiny speakers. It's pretty cool looking. Well, but I yeah. wouldn't buy one. Well, you know, three hundred forty nine bucks. It's not going to sell. No, it's a lot no. of you know, it's only going to sell to Apple assholes who want the newest Apple thing. You know, I only have one of their new Apple TVs because they're like two hundred bucks a piece, and you know, yeah. when you can get a Roku for forty nine bucks or one of their sticks that works just as good as anything, yep. you know, why do you want to pay two hundred bucks for an Apple TV? Oh, because it's Apple. Oh well, fuck you, it's Apple. You know, they used to have the <laughs> Apple TV, be, and the new one be, doesn't work with the new one. You know, I bought the first one in town. And I bought the first one and it works, you know, it works fine for what I was, 
<coughs> excuse me, what I was using it for at the time. Yeah. And then I got a fire stick. And uh, that works great, too. Yeah, I like, the, kind of I like the first gen Apple better than I like the second gen <laughs> Apple TV. I hate the remote on the new Apple TV. It's too sensitive. Uh, f- when you want to fast forward, or I watch a lot of baseball on Apple TV. And every time, if, if I want to watch the replay of a game, just it's it drives me crazy and then stops working. But the the uh, the old one works like a champ. Always. I rarely uh, watch TV in the bedroom, and I have the first generation Apple TV in the bedroom, and I have the Roku in the living room. And uh, I haven't seen any need to have both at, at, on the same well, TV. Well, you know, so the, I'll, I'll tell you what you can do, though. Is uh, And I'm only, uh, not because we have our own Roku channel, which in case people are listening to me, you can actually go online if you have a Roku and there's a, there's a, GabNet, lo- there's a GabNet channel. Uh, yeah. Just type in Great American Broadcast Network, or I think you can even type in GabNet. And uh, you can get the app there that'll put it on your machine, and you can get the live audio from the show, and you can get uh, a couple of days' worth of shows there. You can also get a lot of uh, TV stuff that we did. It's, a, it's a, I think, a pretty good site that I worked on. But the thing Are you is, still over two thousand subscribers. Oh, we're up around five thousand, something like wow. that. Wow, oh, that's in, great. Installed. I don't know. You know, I can't tell anymore. They changed the thing so that it just tells me the cumulative amount of installs. And not how many people have dropped off and how many people are still there. So I don't know. Okay. But yeah. in any event, uh, nobody uses it, but uh, it's there. And also I have one thing called GabNet uh, TV now that I put up there. It's just got a lot of our video stuff, our old video stuff. It was simple enough to put up, so I put it up. Uh, but uh, the reason I say Roku is better than Apple TV, the old Apple TV, is because you can go out and get Roku in a stick form that's thirty nine ninety five, and it does all the stuff the big one does, except it's probably not four K. All right, right. If, not 4K. You, if you're interested in four K, then you got to pay seventy nine bucks. But that's against <coughs> Apple TV, which is two hundred dollars and is not four K. I don't think my TV's four K. Well, I know it's probably not. I have a 4K TV set, so it means something to me, yeah. you know. Uh, so uh, it, 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 the fact that, uh, you know, it's 4K, uh, it, you know, and it, it, the new Apple TV will have 4K, but you're going to have to buy the new Apple TV. <clears throat> so how many times do they think they can keep going back to this old tired horse and beat it? To the it? well. Yeah. If they let you trade it in for half price but uh, maybe by the but way i'm not i <laughs> doubt <laughs> it <laughs> anybody here a game of thrones fan no because damien no. tonight had oh well then we won't damien had the best joke tonight that he made up and i thought it was i went to myself gee why didn't i think of that and i said because i'm so adulpated that i can't think of jokes like that anymore but it was the best line ever and and damien damien you were brilliant to do it <laughs> And these people will not get the joke, but he said, uh, 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 you know, last night uh, the uh, the White Walkers tore down the wall and we're going to build a new one and make them pay for it. Yeah, I uh, heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Very cute. Damien, you're a genius. You're a genius. Um, anyway, D- Tim Albright on, on our uh, on our show here about whether we have a lot more viewers than we normally have tonight uh, yeah i see his uh, comment there yeah uh, tim keeps putting up stuff about politics and we haven't mentioned anything about politics yeah. yet and it's 23 minutes past the hour <laughs> of 11 uh, oh. in new york uh so Do i you suppose oh the secret to the missile Oh, oh, now uh, here, here's his big missile joke. Oh, Everybody go. just hold on to your laughing seats. Yeah. You're going right. to just bust a gut with this joke. Go <laughs> ahead. Phil. Okay. The reason that we didn't retort over this missile, and we have inside information, that it was really an Amazon drone delivery. And, uh, you know, he, you know that he's just a subsidiary of Amazon. This was the joke you were, you were, you were. You were <laughs> I was going to do it a lot earlier. You were telling me you were going to tell and that you were building it up to be a great joke. 
hey, yeah, it wasn't that bad, you know. You know, uh, I, if I were, you know, here's what I do. If I were Kim Jong Un, because of what everybody expects of me, I would send a missile over China, and then have it explode and candy come out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that idea. he would warm <laughs> himself candies. up to the rest of the world. They would say, "Well, I guess that Kim Jong Un isn't that bad." You know, <clears throat> he just completely obliterated China with. Uh, some really wonderful, wonderful chocolates. Smarties. Or, Smarties. or, or uh, kimchi. Huh? Kimchi. kimchi. Yeah. Uh, it's stains. <laughs> what is kimchi? It's uh, fermented vegetable. Uh, it's fermented cabbage that they uh, Koreans uh, ferment and they bury it in, underground for a certain period of time. And it's actually very tasty. I like kimchi. Have you ever you go to any Korean restaurants? No, I don't. No, I have. Oh well, it's uh, one of the things they serve when you go to a Korean restaurant. They they put maybe a half a dozen or a dozen little condiment dishes on on the table in in front of each diner, and uh, you, you eat those until the main meal comes, and you can eat them along with it. And kimchi is the the major one they put out. Oh, yeah, no, it's fermented cabbage. Yours. It's fermented cabbage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, it's tasty. Oh, that's yeah. nice. It might be a developed taste, then. Yeah, you know. it is because I haven't developed it. it no. Sounds pretty nasty. Yeah. Hey, Bill, do you, you know you ever notice kimchi sometimes can be real super spicy? Yeah. And the older I get, the less I can take the spice. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, so. Um, let me, you know, here's, first of all, I, I want to say that, uh, you know, the whole thing went on in Houston uh, with the hurricane and with the flooding, which was unbelievable because I, you know, I lived in Houston for quite, for two years and I really came to love that town. I mean, it's a w wonderful town. Uh, and the people in low it, lying? Huh? Uh, is that? Is it a low-lying area? Is that why it's You know, I don't that? remember whether it was low-lying or not. I just don't remember it ever getting flooded, okay? I remember that things would come along and uh, the coastline cities, like mm. Galveston and so on. Sure. Well, uh, they got hit pretty bad, too. Yeah, well, they would have to have gotten hit. They're right there, you know, ground zero. Huh. By, the time, by the time that storm got in towards Houston, it's a little bit inland, so it's, slow, it's being slowed down. But I don't think it was the winds as much it was, as it was the rains that the caused rain, the yeah. problem yeah, that they had. Uh, well, 52 inches of, of water in, what, a couple of days. And that's the most that has ever rained in, in that area. Uh, but uh, there is something else I heard a me meteorologist talking about. And they said that uh, f uh, that 50 in the last 30 years in the Houston area, 50% of the wetlands have been built on roads, parking lots, uh, uh, homes, and so forth. And they brought in many more uh, pop more population. And uh, because well, the city, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about the, the about the city uh, about that city. Where I worked at KILT in Houston, that uh, uh, building was what was considered somewhere in the center of town. By the time yeah. I went there 20 years later to visit people, the center of, that, of town had moved, okay, literally yeah. had moved um, uh, something like 15 miles north. Wow. So that's that's what you when you're talking about that building. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. You know, for, yes. all, for all we but, know, you know, uh, yeah. But the what happens with the wetlands is they they absorb the water, and now that you have a greater population and half of the area to absorb the water, and uh, and water converges. I I was told in this thing that all the water converges on Houston from a number of different areas. Yeah. So uh, th this lack of wetlands is what's uh, uh, causing uh, a lot of the issues that they're having now. Yeah. And they're not going to be able to fix it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they're saying that water could sit there till the mid-September. Right. Yeah, because it has nowhere to go. And can you imagine the, the humidity once the heat hits and everything else? It's going to be nasty down there. Oh, can you imagine the snakes and there's alligators? Oh, and you, they're and throwing you, alligators in people's backyards. 
in their houses. There yeah. uh, people talking about fish in the house. Yeah. And, and the sewage and 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 the disease. Uh, it, and it's worse than Katrina. But you know the one thing that difference between Houston and Katrina is nobody is shooting each other, nobody's robbing each other, nobody's looting homes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it's a whole different bag uh, bag of beans there. Bag, Alex, bag of beans. Bag of beans. <laughs> yes, what were you gonna say? <laughs> uh, I I'm gonna have to sign off because my mother needs me upstairs. She's doing a medicine. Now your mother, she's, your mother needs you upstairs. She's not feeling that good, so I'm gonna make sure she gets up hills up there. Well, she just can't see. Tell her you're not allowed to sign off, Tony. That you know <laughs> you have an obligation until midnight. And she's just going to have to I wait. I got to give her something anyway, too. Uh, yeah? Yeah. What, gotta, what do you mean uh, you have to give her something? Well, I, they, they dropped off some Disney stuff for her. So my niece brought her some stuff that so she wanted to see it, too. Disney stuff. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> she got Mickey Mouse soap and something else. Like, I don't want it. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I'm just going through the stuff. So I give it to her now. Then I make sure she's good for the night. So I'm going to have to cut her short tonight. Oh, so okay. You're feeding your mother soap? No, I'm going to give, make sure she has her pills, and then I'm just going to give her the gifts, and then I'm going to go downstairs. Oh. That's the whole You go downstairs, you're still living in the basement? No, actually, I just go up a flight for the apartment upstairs, and I come back down. Oh, okay. I was... That's about Let it. him go. He's doing something for his mother, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Let him go. <laughs> Thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. you got to get your priorities in, 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 in order, and you got to get them straight, you know? Right. The yeah, book, Alex, are you going to leave it? What, yeah, me, what, what, you, what, what were you saying, uh, uh, Renee? Alex, are you going to put Tony in your will, in which case Tony needs to go because his mo he's in his mom's will? <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess you have to be careful when you're in your mom's will to not, not piss mom off. <laughs> there you go. Because someday, I mean, you know, I mean, something could happen to her, and then he wouldn't have to box those hats anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's like Sisyphus. That's his life, boxing hats. You know, he has to he has to box enough hats that he gets almost <laughs> to the top of the thing, and then the boxes fall down. And he has to redo it. <laughs> Jeff like that. Wow. I like the Greek. Uh, the Greek, uh, yeah. The Sisyphus. Ref ref so uh, we, reference. if are we going to talk about Houston here? Because Houston is just the first city among many cities that are going to be in this kind of sort of same situation. Kind of, uh, and sort most of, of these cities are from Trump voters that refuse to believe in climate change. Well, uh, so, yeah. You know, you it's know. cyclical. Uh, in 1970, they had a, uh, a similar thing happen, uh, you know, and they had Katrina and all of these things. That was how many years ago? You know, it's not just because, uh, you know, now people are doing things to pollute okay, the earth. I don't want to hear a bunch of Trump uh, excuses right now. Here's the thing that's a problem with Houston. All, only one out of every six people has flood insurance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the reason for that is, and I can say this from having lived in Houston, I probably wouldn't have flood insurance either. Because when's the last time there was a flood in Houston, Texas? Right? Mm, I was seven. 1970, so, I thought. Uh, well, I mean, it was, it, it, it's, it's, it, it kind of not the thing. Like, it was like, remember in San Francisco when we had all those storms and the hills were yeah, demolishing, well, I remember. I demolishing sofa. houses and everything? Those people weren't insured because nobody had that kind of insurance. Oh, no, no, the, in Sausalito? They, remember, there was like seven or eight houses that slid, and they were all uh, million-dollar houses and, and, back in 1980. And, and they weren't insured for that kind of thing because that wasn't anticipated. You know. Well, okay, yeah. living in California, we know that earthquake insurance is messed up. It's very um, it's, it's the way it's set up. You would have to have a large amount of money as a deposit or a down payment in right. order to even uh, uh, in order to put in effect your insurance. We have a big deductible. Um, yeah. Right. It's a huge deductible. If it's a if it's a hundred thousand dollar house, you have to have like twenty or forty percent. It's it's just a an in great a, a huge well, number that has to. It's sit there. almost so, impossible. It's almost impossible in in California to get earthquake insurance. Oh um, no, you can get it, but, but it's incredibly expensive. Yeah. Incredibly. So well, it's not. It depends on the the the. Uh, 
the, the age of the house too, and and the code that it's under, because yeah. mine was pretty cheap. It was we bought this house brand new, and I think the first few years it was like a hundred and seventy five bucks a year. Yes, but you know, like seven. In, huh? in, in Pallister, there's a fault line that runs through there. That's and, right. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I like to take geology classes wherever yeah. I move to. And uh, they took us down to Hollister, and we yeah. looked at the uh, fault line, the side. Well, what, what, which fault line, Moderate, which fault, which fault line, which fault line is that, Phil? Uh, the, the Hollister fault? Uh, it's, uh, San, it's a branch off the San Andreas, but yeah, I, yeah, I can't I, remember if it's San Benito or... Or yeah. what? But they don't even fix Monterey Street anymore because it's constantly moving. Even yeah. There's a spot in our newspaper, you know, where they put for the uh, the temperatures for the week. They got yeah, a little the side corner, so. and even the street. I remember, and this is back in the '70s that I did this, but uh, they the, they showed in, in the street how you could see where the uh, the fault line was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I remember correctly, it's twenty percent of the amount of the policy. So if yeah. you have a million dollar home which is almost average for the state of California, you have to have that money sitting there in reserve waiting for an earthquake to actually happen. Mm -hmm. So what everybody found out after the Loma Prieta quake is that hardly anybody had insurance because it was so freaking expensive to come, up with the, um, to come up with the deductible that they figured that if there was going to be an earthquake, everybody was going to band together and force the government to help pay for everybody's insurance. So is that what the people of Houston are doing? Is that the if flood insurance was so expensive that they figured that the government would have to uh, declare everything a disaster area and then the government can come in and give, and give everybody a loan whether well, they had flood insurance or not? They're already there, with people, which is what they're doing right now, yeah. Yeah. And and they were proactive about it. I think Trump, uh, uh, a week before the storm hit, uh, got together Stop. with uh, the uh, the governors of Louisiana and Texas uh, to uh, declare uh, that you know to put in place what was going to be needed. Yeah. No. No. There was no. just one mayor, uh, the mayor of Houston, I think, that uh, uh, was uh, having a problem with it. I don't, I don't know why. No, and, and that's another thing. How do how do the northwestern or northeast people feel with the fact that Houston's you know having these problems, but everybody, all of the representatives from Texas refused to put in money for Sandy. Uh, I know that uh, what's his name did uh, Ted Cruz didn't want to put money in for Sandy. I don't know why. Uh, did he have anything to do with that? You know. Uh, the you know is it up to Texas to to fund a disaster zone or uh, no? It's you know. just that it refused to participate in in and turning over federal to help turn over federal funds to Sandy. So if they refuse to participate in Sandy and they refuse to buy flood insurance, what is it exactly they want from us? Those low lying areas are usually full of poorer people that uh, that maybe couldn't afford the insurance. Uh, and you know, so that uh, it, it was very similar to uh, the Ninth Ward and things like that. Although it's so much more spread out, uh, but the lowlands are usually the areas where the poorer people live. And, no. uh, and, and do you want to? And if, if anybody thinks that they are not going to get flooded in a hundred-year flood zone. Go up to the, well, I knew before oh, President Obama left, I don't know if it's still up there, but the whitehouse.gov had a map on its website saying which cities are about to get, are going to be the hardest hit and what areas those are in. And Houston, New Orleans, a uh, crap load of Florida, some of Nor uh, North Carolina, these people are all in low lying 100 year flood zones. And that's kind of the other question is, what are you doing in a 100-year flood? If, if you're going to buy a house right now, I would beg you to look at something in the 500-year flood zone because I'm thinking the 100-year flood zone is now the norm. Alex, we, you know where Tam Junction is in Mill Valley? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, I 
was going. I put an offer in to buy a house there for twenty five thousand uh, dollars. It was a two bedroom, one bath uh, in, in that Tam Junction, and the bank wouldn't loan the money because they said it was in a flood zone. <laughs> so, I ended up not getting that one. Now, if I would have had it, it would probably be worth a million and a half. Right. Now I, I know. I know in Sacramento we have floods once in a while. Yeah. Once in a great while. Not that often. But it's always north of me, in Yuba City, in that area, always floods all the time, constantly. Because the, the idiots on the dam, Oroville Dam, and not really what you call, quote, built the, da- you know, the things right. And every time it rains hard or does, does something, it always floods. Is that Phil Dam the one that's the spillway is washing away? Yeah, it's, then it's supposed to get it done in September. We'll wait and see. But no, they're going to have it done. They said Jack Bishop. I, 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 I doubt it. Jack Bishop is here, and of course he is in Texas, and he's, he's probably going. He's probably going to report you, to us what's happening. By the way, J- uh, Jack, I got mm-hmm. I got a person on my uh, my uh, Facebook page who wrote, gee, I hope Jack is okay. And I said, have you looked at a map? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, that, I mean, bit, uh, uh, you aren't even <laughs> close. I had a was. friend who I worked with 50 years ago call me over the weekend wanting to know if uh, we were okay. And I told him the truth. I had my Saab convertible out over the weekend with the top down, with my glasses on, looking very cool. But yeah. uh, uh, what happened down in Houston is is uh, kind of uh, uh, interesting in that, according to um, Texas weather prognosticators, mm-hmm. this was a one and a thousand year storm. Bullshit. That's Oh, okay, bullshit. I'm just telling no, you. I, what, I agree with. I agree with uh, knowing the area and having lived in the area at the same time as as Jack. He and I were in Houston together. Uh, I happen to know that that is considered fairly safe when it comes to hurricanes and things like that. Uh, so this is a very, very unusual experience. Well, uh, it's it's but, but hold on a second. All right, all right Renee. Renee. Renee, yes. Houston is roughly about thirty miles inland right. from the coast. What True. caused it to move so far in? Uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, it was it it was a it kept gathering strength and gathering strength. But the real thing about this one, well, of course, let's not but, talk about global warming causing any of this. Yeah, yeah. But the real thing about this one is it moved. Very slowly, it just hung and out. Not, it at not. one point it was moving at six or seven miles an hour. Mm. Now, Alex, Houston proper is twice the size that it was when you and I lived there. Right. Houston now begins. Well, coming up my way, Houston now begins almost forty miles from downtown. Well, I think now I may be wrong about this. Jack, is that it always was that large. It's just it was never populated. It is now populated. Yeah, because and, and because I we remember it earlier, I remember Jack it being listed wetlands. as I think the second largest city in America in land right. size. Fourth, fourth largest city in no, America. Fourth, fourth largest in population, second largest in land mass. Oh, you land know, mass. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, that's what I'm Angeles. saying. Do you, do you know what the largest in land mass is in the United States? Uh, uh, Miami. No, Oklahoma yeah. City. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely yeah. right. You're yeah. absolutely right. So what you're talking about is that Houston, a huge city in size, the population grew into it. Because when we yeah. were there, there were a lot of unpopulated areas. There was a lot of farmland. There was a lot of just... Mm-hmm. In, in fact, the airport used to be 75 miles outside of the city proper. And now it's like next door, I think. You know? Well, there are two airports. Was there Bush International or? Uh, no, Hobby International Hobby. was the was the airport that Alex and I remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And then they built Houston Intercontinental, which became Bush, that yeah. is up around Conroe. Right. It was, was a long way about, away. It took a 70, it was a 75 mile trip. Yeah. It was, you know, it, when they built it, everybody said, oh, hell, this thing will be a flop for sure. And uh, the last time I flew in there, I said, I'm, it's going to take me longer to get to where I'm going in Houston than it did to fly from Dallas to here. Well, Jack, what they, I was talking earlier that I heard a meteorologist say that 50% of the wetlands, which is what absorbs the water from the rain, uh, are, is now uh, paved and mm. homes and, uh, oh, and yeah. concrete yeah. and uh, but it's, it's, absorb the water. But that's what's happened in Texas. Mm. You know, I live in a suburb north of Dallas. When we bought our house 25, 26 years ago, I could walk out my back door and look across the street behind my house and and see marshland with little mm -hmm. eyes looking back at me. Mm -hmm. Now there is a supermarket, a couple of restaurants, uh, a, a, a kid's a kid's clothing store, and uh, just on and on and on right across the street from me. I can walk to my supermarket. And all of that is parking lot. All and, of that is parking and lot. And therefore, you have the runoff from that, which creates pollution mm -hmm. from the water table, as well as it can absorb the moisture. Well, to show you how the building is here, uh, a few years ago, I was coming back from the more distant suburb that Amy lives in, which really isn't a suburb. She, she not only lives in a, uh, in a different county, just as I do, but where she lives is an actual town, not a suburb. They actually build stuff there. And so I got off the freeway one exit early, one exit early from my house. And I'm going through what I thought should have been there, and there was nothing there but half-million-dollar homes. And I said to myself, when the hell did they build this shit? And a half-million-dollar home in Texas is a four-million-dollar home in California. Easily. Easily. So, Jack, uh, you and Amy last week were talking about the elevation of what, state, what area in Texas? You well, were saying we could, it was 667 feet above or below yeah, or something yeah, like that? You know, it depends on who you talk to. I've always heard that Houston uh, was about 100 feet above sea level, you know, somewhere between 50 and 100 feet, depending on where you were. But uh, to put this storm in perspective, uh, I read this afternoon that a third of Harris County, which is a big county, bigger than Dallas County, bigger than the little postage stamp county that I live in. And remember, Texas has 256 counties. A third of Harris County is or will be by the end of the week underwater. Because this storm has gone back out again. And it's but picking it up. Lost power. Now it's a tropical storm and not a hurricane. That's right. And, 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 and the water is warmer. Why is it warmer? Up. Why is it warmer, uh, Phil? Could you tell us? <laughs> it's, it's hot out. This Korea <laughs> threw a bomb over the top. And yeah. Well, why? Why? There, why? But... Why is it? I mean, the reason why these hurricanes are f fiercer than they ever were is because the one thing that can feed them is warm water. And the water mm. is warmer than it's ever been. Now, what could possibly, in the world, in my wildest imagination, mm. could cause that? Would you like to take a Would you like to take a guess, Rob? Because I don't think Phil knows. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Yeah. First word. It's pollution. Nah. Um, so I, I'm looking at a map, and it looks like a lot of Houston is is at sea level or below it yeah. says 50 it says yeah. 50 feet in the north northwest uh houston goes up to 125. we used to have so a it, in, in marin county it, in marin county we used to have a flooding problem in certain areas 
because right, camp they, function. You know, well, they were uh, below. They were below sea level. Yeah, well, Larkspur on the way to Quarter Madeira. Oh, there is this one uh, street in Larkspur that they used yeah. to have a, a all year long a rowboat at the beginning of the street. Right. So people could <laughs> row to their homes when the street flooded out. Well, would it make you all feel more comfortable if we said that anybody who lives in a floodplain is required to have insurance? And if you can't afford the insurance, you get you, the government takes your house and makes it flat again and moves you to some place where it's dry. Well, we're hearing a lot should, more about that. Built in so, floodplains, you know, are, New Orleans. No, well, actually, right now, the, what they say for these people who aren't insured. There will be some kind of government insurance that will at least help it, but it runs out on Friday, so Congress has to reapprove it. Good luck with really? that one. Well, they they <laughs> will if they approve the wall. See, this is all Trump's doing. <laughs> Don't forget the budget. Oh, and so he said, "Look, I will have this disaster, uh, a monumental disaster. They'll they'll have to put it in, and I will put the wall as part of the deal." And you know, the wall can also be a water break. Uh, to keep this from happening again. Yes, Jack. Well, I just hope that that hypocrite Ted Cruz doesn't have to vote because he's <laughs> got turned down help for uh, uh, Sandy, Sandy. Sandy uh, in New Jersey. Yeah, for New Jersey. And now Houston is going to need a hell of a lot more help than you needed in well, New I, Jersey. I don't mind what, giving help. Hmm? I, what? What did? Uh, for, I, for, what, I thought I heard forty billion, but I, I think it's going to be a lot more than that. Uh, I heard uh, a higher figure than that yesterday, yes. but uh, I don't Renee? remember. Renee, look, I, I don't mind giving them the money because they're in need. What I do mind is allowing them back to rebuild the, the area if their right. house is taken away. We're hearing so, more and more about that. that We're this is more a, more a about thousand that. year uh, issue. And that, uh, but because of the building in the wetlands, it's going to happen again. And you know, same, Renee, thing is, same thing's that. going on. Same thing's going on in Florida. Same thing. Renee, sure, up until I'm, the, up until I'm not bailing weekend, out Florida. Renee, up until this weekend, the most, um, the greatest amount of rainfall that ever fell in Texas didn't even fall in Houston. It fell up here near me. And that was in 1949, where they got. Was that? Hmm? I think, you know how I, many inches that was? Yeah, I do. It, it, it was around a, a foot, and that was in rainfall. Now, don't confuse rainfall with what happened, you know, well, in Houston. Did they say that the Houston was 52 inches in rainfall? Uh, I don't think. It, uh, I don't uh, know. It may, it may get up to that. I heard a figure yesterday, uh, thanks to uh, CNN, that uh, one area that is already at flood stage near the Brazos River mm -hmm. uh, that was at 50 inches will probably, the river itself will crest it over six feet above flood stage. Well, yeah, they said that that river, uh, the last time they had a flood, it was at 55 feet, and now it's at 59 or something. It's well, going to be, a, uh, well, you know, it, it's... It, you know, I've got a cousin that lives down there, poor son of a bitch, because my dad always said when I was growing up in San Francisco, and my mom and dad are from the from the Houston area, I, he once said the best thing about Houston was the road to Dallas. And, yeah. and um, this cousin of mine was in the hospital when all of this happened. Sure. Wow. By the way, by the way, by the way. was evacuated. Yeah. And he hasn't been able to get home but since Saturday. By the way, we got we got to talk about this. Uh, every Sunday on television, uh, there is a preacher who uh, oh, takes out lots please. of time on television stations. Oh, your buddy Joel. And uh, if you let me finish the story, Phil. I mean, I have timing and I was going to do the payoff and now you blew it for me. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'm good at that. Well, yeah, I know. And no, not that's not good at that. Bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, forget it. I Are we going to have to fill this story Friday? <laughs> well, Pat, Patrick said that Joel Olstein is just as horrific well, as well, Peter. Well, well, hold on a second. May, may I please tell the story to people who are not familiar with it? Okay, Phil, give me that. Yeah. 
So uh, every Sunday, uh, as soon as girlfriend hears this guy's voice, she says, turn that off. She can't stand him. And I can't stand him either. And believe it or not, Sirius XM is paying him a million dollars a year to do it, put up to port all his shows onto Sirius XM. And his name is Joel Osteen. Well, he's got this big mega church that fits about, I don't know, what, 25,000 people or something like that? Something like that. And when the, for instance, the Houston Coliseum was taking in, it takes holds 5,000 people and it's housing 10,000 refugees from the storm. Joel Osteen wouldn't open his doors to refugees no. from the storm. No, I, I, read, I read earlier uh, that that was a false story. No, it's not a false story. Yeah. No, no, no. He said he was going to wait until they actually needed it and then they would open it, which is bullshit, too. He, right. he had but no yep. intention of opening it because he didn't want people soiling the carpet. Exactly. And, and uh, all of a sudden, when, all, when he looked like the real bad guy, he suddenly changed his story and made the excuse that he was waiting for the others to fill up. You don't wait for the others to fill up. They were overflowing with people. Yeah. You, you say, hey, come to my church. We'll take care of you, too. Well, you know? the, uh, the city of the, Dallas uh, has opened up its Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry, its convention center. We've right. taken in 5,000 people already, and theoretically, you can't get from Houston to Dallas. Well, so, they said they were the turning away busloads, but they were taking individual walk-ins uh, at this time. Yeah, well, I mean... The joke, the, 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 the joke the, was that God didn't make uh, Joel Olstein open those doors. Twitter did. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it was when he saw the bad publicity, he couldn't stand it. Right, Brian? You haven't said anything tonight. You know, I just don't oh, like yeah. the fact that he doesn't want to replace his carpet. Anybody's you know? on my Facebook, they saw the uh, postings I made about Joe, Mr. Olstein. The yeah. uh, I guess somebody hacked into his Twitter account or something and said uh, they had Joel Olstein say, when I get home from uh, my having delivered this sermon at my mega church, I'm going to go home and eat my sweet wife's ass. I ad-libbed. I said, you, by wife, I'm sure you mean somebody with testicles and an Adam Adam's apple, right? Yeah. Mr. <laughs> it, it, you know, well, but I, I mean, want to know if it, has anybody noticed the fact? Yeah, that it is always the parts of the country that profess to be the most religious that have the worst natural disasters. You think the latest the lady doth protest too much? You know, got that phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. I think God just pissed yeah. off Adam. and locusts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I mean, it, 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 uh, he is taking so much heat for this that yeah. it, it's well, it, it, it and and well, he should and he should. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, the fact that people were complaining about it meant that he had some kind of impact on this whole thing. It wasn't just that they were griping for the sake of griping. But that if anybody should have opened his doors, it should have been this guy who professes to be all the good things and the proper and right things, and then he can't do the right thing. I mean, uh, he, you know, this could ruin his entire ministry. Good riddance. Well, good riddance yeah. to him. I hate him. I hate the him. The only way this could end better is if it ruined Christianity. And by the way, shame I, on shame. I keep my goals realistic. Yeah. Shame on my former employer for paying this guy. When I first heard that Joel Osteen had a, was going to have a Joel Osteen channel, I figured, how much is Joel Osteen paying them for it? You know, because you know, he's going to port all his TV shows and his radio shows and stuff and put it on there, right? And then I found out they're paying him a million dollars. And I went, what? He would have done it for free. Yeah. Hey, you they know? could have gotten Alex Bennett for uh, half here's of that. Uh, they, uh, Joel Osteen sails luxury yacht through flooded Houston to pass out copies of his book. Uh, <laughs> <there you go>. <laughs> <laughs> so on that yeah. I will see you on the other side yeah, of the interstate. Uh, oh, I thought you meant you were going to die, and I was going to die at the same time, and we're going to see each other on the other side. But I guess yeah. you're on your way. Goodbye. Uh, he has a show. He's next, by the way. We should mention that, and you should uh, uh, be sure that you listen to that. Anybody have la any last comments about uh, any of the stuff we've talked about tonight? Yes, you, Jeff. Well, the one thing I could say is about I think it's 40 years ago when I first moved to Connecticut, I had this house, and, and it was a relatively new home, 
that somebody else had lived in for a number of years. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we had a very bad flooding problem. And I go, what the heck is going on here? Well, I, I realized that it has been a tremendous farm area at one time. So there was uh, uh, peat and stuff like that on top of the stone for years, probably for hundreds of years, 300 years. And what they did is before they built a new house, they would take all the peat out of it and build a new house on yeah. top of it. Yeah. Therefore, instant flood. Exactly. Hey, listen, we're, uh, we're as you can hear, that's the theme. And uh, we got to get going here to make way for Jack and Amy with the intersection. Uh, thank you to uh, Rob for calling us tonight and being part of the show. Uh, Scott, uh, Mike, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jeff. Thank you uh, to uh, 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 Brian. He hardly said anything, but what he said was sufficient. Phil Meyer, thank you. Kevin. Lots of participation tonight. Renee, thank you. Thanks to Tony, and, and thanks to Jack Bishop for calling us. Hey, everybody, why don't you look at your camera and wave a big bye-bye to everybody? Okay, bye. Okay, and that's our citizens panel for tonight. They, uh, they're they all going the way of uh, of all flesh. Out the door. And uh, we're, uh, we're out the door here. We're leaving. It's time for us to call the whole thing a wrap. We'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.